Peter, the the whole question of ciphers and things is fascinating. And I know Francis Bacon, his name comes up time and time again when we talk about this. Tell us a little bit more about Francis Bacon and ciphers. Yes, he obviously loved cipher mathematics. Yeah. And in his um, advancement learning, he actually uh, tells you one of the ciphers invented in his youth when he was mm. in Paris. Now, he was sent to Paris um, quite an early age, age 15, straight after university, yeah. and was there until he was 18. Mm. And he had to suddenly come back because his father, Sir Nicholas Bacon, died. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, he was going to carry on and go to Italy and so on. Yeah. Mm. But his main purpose of being sent to France was to carry on his training as a lawyer, mm. to learn about French law and politics yeah. mm. and many other things. Mm. But he was also taught to work with... Sir Francis Walsingham's intelligence network there right. in the embassy in France, yeah. which was the key place gathering mm. in the intelligence from across Europe yes. into Paris or wherever mm. the embassy was, yeah. and then sending it back to England. So he was part of the spy service. So he's part of the spy service, mm. but his work was to um, invent ciphers and decipher mm. and collate the intelligence mm. that was gathered from that. So yes. made, made reports to send mm. to ultimately to the Queen um, in England. Mm. And um, he did become absolutely expert in that. And he was working with other experts. Like mm. Thomas Phillips was known as the top yeah. cryptologist mm. there. And so they got to know each other very well in Paris mm. and worked at ciphers. The same, t so well, that was very kept secret. So, yeah. of course, a lot about of Bacon and his interest in mathematics and so on is secret. Because yes. of people who say, oh, he wasn't a mathematician, wasn't interested in that. Which sure there was. <laughs> You find it, you find out, but he, it, it was part of his secret life. Of his secret yeah. life. Yeah. Um, mm. but, but anyway, it also takes you into the mystery schools. He, he came, I think he was brought up in a mystery school in England. Yes, yeah, so his father was involved. His father was yeah. involved, mm. but that had a link with the one in Paris mm. uh, that was connected with the French Academy of, mm. of, the, Royal, of the Royal Court. Um, and that, that is a mystery school being founded right back. Um, by Francois the First, yeah. at the mm. time of Leonardo da Vinci, and so on, and, and there were lots of things one could find, discover to to show that. Yeah. Um, but it was still alive and well when Bacon was in Paris, mm. and he made contact with that. Yeah. And um, one of the trails to follow is um, a sort of a cipher signature they used. Mm. So. So a cipher signature. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> It, it's something that can be used in, in um, ways that you hardly notice. In other ways, mm. it stares you in the face, but you might not have a clue what it means. Yes. And um, Bacon developed it into what became known as the AA headpiece. Mm. So it's something hidden in plain sight. Yeah, mm. and it's based on the letter A, the alpha, yeah. or, or the aleph in Hebrew, because yeah. mm. Bacon used Greek and Hebrew, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and other, other languages too. But Greek and Hebrew. Hebrew are important ones yeah. for the cipher, mm. English, Greek, Hebrew. Yeah. And so the letter A is the Aleph mm. in Hebrew and um, mm. Alpha in Greek. Yeah. And that, uh, in, in terms of relating to the zodiac, signs mm. of the zodiac, that's the Taurus sign of the zodiac, which is known as the key initial sign. Mm. So the, the bull roars the word of God which creates everything else. Okay. So the Alpha yeah. is that creator, yeah. God, yeah. the creator creating everything yes. through sound, through mm. the word. Mm. Uh, that's what the Aleph represents. Then you go through the process of creation and evolution. Then you mm. end up with the illumined soul mm. at the end, the one who knows that, yes. that truth that's been uttered yeah. initially. Mm. And that's in Greek the Omega, mm. or in Hebrew it's the Tau. Yes. So... Um, but the, the end is the same as the beginning, because if you know the truth, you embody the truth. So you are the truth. Yes. So, so the omega is the same as the yeah. alpha. Yeah. So one, instead of putting the alpha omega or mm. alpha tau, mm. you can put alpha alpha, Yes. the double A. Mm. And that, that's what Bacon took up and used uh, with his Rosicrucian group in England as, as a call sign, mm. signature mm. of works that were somehow yeah. involved with the Rosicrucians. So just in those two little letters, so much embodied in that, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah amazing. And well, once yeah. you know that, you, mm. you, you can get alerted to these yes. things. So that, for instance, Shakespeare Folio uses yeah. it, and it's, well, you use it throughout the Shakespeare um, publications. 
um, and also publications by under Bacon's name and other people. Yes. And um, and you, you can follow that that treasure trail in itself. Mm. There are also other other designs they use too, but that that's a key one. Yes. And Bacon even had a, a book made for him, mm. um, a sort of he Hebrew um, grammar or two Hebrew grammars bound together with mm. um, blank paper mm. for him to write on, with, with his writing on it. Mm. And um, and the last, the two extra sheets put in um, with, with special code mm. in it, or really about yeah. uh, creation, Genesis. Mm. And, um, and on that is the double A headpiece. So it first appears actually in Paris in the special yes. Publication yes. for Bacon, yeah. and then it's brought brought to England, and so on. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> so much to find out about, yeah. isn't there? <laughs> but when, yes. when he was in England, he he um, then carried on working with Walsingham until Walsingham died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he, um, after that, his brother Anthony Bacon came back mm. from, from France, joined him. And Anthony Bacon he passed the intelligence network, mm. it's an intelligence so at, at a very high level yeah. in France, and he came back and. And they fell out with Burley, or Burley had never helped them. Yeah. And so mm. Um, mm. they put their allegiance with Essex, mm. which was another way to the Queen. Yes. Mm. So they fed the Queen all their intelligence that they got through their net intelligences, their yeah. network of intelligence. Mm. And they had all the top intelligences working with them. Mm. So they, they ran that for several years together. Mm. With all this information, all the countries of Europe coming together yeah. about all sorts of things, right, right mm. down to you know, what the location looked like, yeah. what were the travel travel arrangements, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, wonderful, they, they, you know, yes. they're they gaining all knowledge yeah. about everything. So, so, so many elements to this man, you know, yeah. a philosopher, a poet, a spy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there's so much to unravel. So much un uh, Anthony, so much Bacon, Anthony Bacon's yeah. brother, he, he was known as a secret poet too. Yes. Oh. The, the mm. Phoenix. Yes. The poets. And, but by, fr by French poets yes. who were adulating both Anthony yeah. and Francis. So you can imagine when the two of them came together, you've got the Gemini. Yes. And that the Gemini is another key yeah. to the whole working of all this, including the Shakespeare plays. We're going to have a conversation <laughs> about that, aren't we? <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Peter. <laughs>